This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company Illumio. I'm sitting down right now with Matthew Glenn, who is VP of Product Management at the company. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank I got a, a lot of uh, great questions here from our tech team, so are you ready to get started? Let's go. All right. So first question. Can you talk about Illumio's adaptive micro-segmentation approach in more detail for me, including the policy compute engine and the virtual enforcement node? Great question. So um, our solution is comprised, as you pointed out, of two uh, components. There's something we call a virtual enforcement node, or what I'll call a VEN, um, which is installed inside the guest OS. Um, so uh, what's interesting about it is it doesn't do any form of enforcement, even though oh. we call it a virtual enforcement node. Okay. It has nothing to do with enforcement. Um, what it does is it's going to gather context and telemetry okay. on the host it was actually installed on, like what are the processes it's installed on, what type of operating systems mm -hmm. it is. And it sends that up to this thing we call a policy compute engine, which is really the brain of our product. Okay. The policy compute engine, we deliver from our SaaS, uh, and we deliver it on-prem. We don't charge differently for how it's consumed. Okay. What the policy compute engine does is it does two things. The first thing it does is visualizes your application dependency map. So it's literally going to give you a map of how things are communicating with one another. Yes. And okay. then what you do is you write natural language policy. Like if I say... Uh, for the Pen Tester Academy application, mm -hmm. I want the web tier to be open to my users. I want the web tier to talk to an application tier, and mm -hmm. my application tier to talk to a database. And it takes that natural language uh, description of what you want. Mm -hmm. It's going to it's going to munge that up. It can compute layer three, layer four firewall rules for every one of the hosts that make up that pen test app application, okay. and it sends it back down to the VEN. And the VEN is like an antenna; it just sends and receives information. And the receiving part of the VEN, that antenna, is going to take those layer three, layer four firewall rules, and it's going to not enforce the rules. Okay. What it does do is it programs the firewall that you already even have inside of the host. So what we do is we just activate the firewalls that you already have. So in Linux, you have something called IP tables. Mm -hmm. And in Windows, you have something called the Windows filtering platform. Yeah. What this allows us to do is just basically instrument and activate every single layer three, layer four firewall in every single host. That allows it to work on your existing data center. Wow. It works uh, inside of Amazon, works inside of Azure, works the data center you're in today, the data center you want to be in tomorrow. And... Uh, and that's really the way the product works. Um, the PC itself, that policy compute engine you're asking about, mm -hmm. it's just an application that sits on top of Red Hat. So it's not an okay. appliance. It's for uh, all the Linux people out there. They'll sort of get mm -hmm. that. It's an RPM install. And um, it's really built as scale-out software. One of the big benefits of the product was uh, when we were in stealth, and I've been with the product the company for a long time, mm -hmm. we were originally just going to be a SaaS platform. Okay. And uh, so the PC was only going to be delivered from SaaS. And what happened was we had a bunch of customers um, that kept on coming to us. We mm -hmm. kept on, they kept on asking for demonstrations, and they would try the product in sort of isolated labs. And they came to us, our, our uh, CEO, and said, look, we love this product. It is, the, it is an awesome product. There's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. But if you think we're ever going to take this from your SaaS, you're on drugs, oh right? So God. we literally had to basically pivot a little bit okay. and take that SaaS platform and package it up for customers to take on-prem. So okay. um, we don't charge differently for that, but literally the exact same software that we deliver from our SaaS is exactly what like, some of our big financial services customers take. So it's literally, you could be a small customer, you're really riding in the same product that some of the biggest banks in the world wow. are using. So okay, that's incredible. It's pretty cool. Got it. Yeah. And uh, so now, as your solution runs in data centers, you must be ingesting a lot of tele telemetry data to understand uh, the evading threatscape. Does this not cause a lag in detection, and how do you make this near real time? Okay, it's a, that's another good question. Yeah. And that's actually one of the, uh, we spend a lot of time uh, in sort of optimizing our detection capabilities when we were in stealth. Okay. And a um, little funny story, so when we were in stealth, we actually delivered the product 15 times to customers yeah. before, before we ever announced what it was, and we learned a lot about how to optimize those things. Mm, so. Okay. Uh, the big challenge that uh, any big customer will have, and for your, uh, for your viewers, they're going to be concerned with sort of this interesting balance of um, wanting to make sure that you get visibility and you okay. can do enforcement, but then 
not over, sort of overtaking the CPU of what's on the host. So what we do is we do a, a lot of optimizations. Like some things need to be real time and some things don't need to be so real time. Mm, so okay. we sort of have a really good understanding of what those things are and we've tuned the product to satisfy those, uh, the needs. Um, and it's, it's, it's one of the fun parts of the product because when you go to like, talk to your, the customers, mm -hmm. like the application teams are going to be like, what is this? Like right. it's not another agent. And then we explain to them exactly what I told you. It's not actually doing any enforcement. You're just activating IP tables that's mm -hmm. already inside the host. They sort of go, huh, that's interesting. And then they take the car for a ride. Mm -hmm. They love it. So it's uh, like it really uh, goes to sort of like DevOps. It's activating Linux firewalls. Mm -hmm. We're relying on the Linux community that basically for everything that they've basically been contributing to IP tables okay. uh, for years. And sort of like the idea of activating what's in the host is really cool. Um, and so that's why customers like it. And that's how we sort of understand the trade offs of what's inside, the, you know, how to optimize the CPU utilization, the memory utilization inside the host. We've done a, a lot of work in that area. Got Got it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, now, when you say that your product is adaptive, are you using machine learning and AI for learning and adapting? So, um, you know, if when you, and I'll hopefully get to show this to you in a few minutes, yeah. uh, um, what we learn uh, is basically what we call a graph, right? So, okay. if you think about what is a graph, it's a bunch of lines about how things are connected with one another. Mm -hmm. um, sort of like if you look at, like, if you look at Google Maps, there's sort of like the street view. Yes, yeah. Uh, what we, but there is no street view uh, for how your applications actually work. So, the first thing we learn mm -hmm. is actually not the a network topology, we learn an application topology, and we visualize that, and I'll show that to you in a few minutes. Okay. Um, and the, so once we learn that, um, we can also detect when there's a change in that graph. And some changes are good, like let's, we could basically disambiguate, hey, it's, it's, right now it's the holiday season, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I want to auto-scale my ordering application in Amazon. So instead of having six uh, operating system instances taking orders, I now need 200 operating system instances. Okay. They're all going to communicate with one another, they're mm -hmm. going to form a graph graph of communications, but that's actually a good thing. It's something that you want, right? Mm -hmm. But then maybe if something's going wrong, um, there's anomalies in how that graph looks, right? So it might be a connection that shouldn't be there suddenly forks up and tries to establish a connection. That's an anomaly in the graph that the system can actually detect and uh, alert, uh, an, alert uh, an operator when that happens. So there's good graphs and there's uh, bad things that happen in the graph. And we actually uh, can detect those changes. Okay, okay? wonderful. And uh, now I know many security solutions lose visibility when monitoring encryption to data, how does Illumio handle this? That's a that's a good question. So the graph that I just spoke right, of is right. really about the graph of communication. So um, how is that web tier allowed to talk to that app tier on what port and protocol? Mm -hmm. So it's really encryption isn't really uh, uh, an issue there. Like, really? okay. yeah, let's just let's. I, one of the cool things about micro segmentation is many of the technologies in cyber. And I used to work at McAfee, so I know a lot nice. about detection. Right? Yep, yep. We, um, is really sort of looking your rearview mirror. Like, um, um, I, I've detected that this uh, malware is now in the network. I've detected, but it's really looking in your rear view mirror. Right. Micro segmentation yeah. as a technology is about proactively protecting yourself. So okay. instead of waiting for something to get into the data center, you block it before it gets in, right? Nice. So there's, this, there's two separate things there. So in terms of encrypting technology to encrypt a bad payload, mm -hmm. that's we basically will restrict the communications, which would prevent that from uh, something sort of skipping sideways inside the data center. Okay. But the cool thing about the product is on demand, we can encrypt any traffic. So one of the cool things you're seeing like in your web browser now is they really want you to, everything to be SSL connected, right? Yes, yep. But for some of your legacy applications, you can't sort of retro write the application, mm -hmm. but yet you want the traffic to be encrypted. One of the cool things our product does is on demand, you can basically enact IPsec between any combination of workloads. Why is that cool? Uh, if you want to basically have all your data in motion be encrypted, but you don't want to rewrite your applications, you can use Illumio to do that too. Okay, nice. Okay. Very cool, yeah. And uh, can you give me an end-to-end -end example of an application's dependency mapping using Illumio and how uh, this can help uncover attacks? Okay, so uh, why don't I talk about uh, some of our banking customers. Okay. Okay, so um, a, a couple years ago, a major hack app happened to the SWIFT uh, payment systems, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, unfortunately, Bangladesh, which is sort of like this, you know, poor country, unfortunately, had like $400 million stolen from it. What had happened was the um, um, the SWIFT payment system, which is how all the banks are interconnected, mm -hmm. someone got in there and basically 
heisted $400 million out of SWIFT payments, right? Okay. So um, the SWIFT consortium, which basically governs all of the interbank transfers, um, they basically mandated that all the banks, after this happened, mm-hmm. would do something called segmentation, or what mm-hmm. we're talking about micro-segmentation. Mm-hmm. The challenge is that that's not like a brand new application that's, you know, riding out in the DevOps world, building micro segment, uh, microservices. Right. This is some le- old legacy uh, applications mm-hmm. and a lot a lot of not in a lot of uh, the organizations sort of build on top of them right. and so no one really knows how it works so what happens is uh, customers uh, put our product out that van I was speaking of earlier okay. begins to build up context and telemetry what it does is it's looking at what's on the host then it's also looking at what are the IPS that that host is talking to and what IPS are talking to it and then it builds that that map that visibility that I was talking mm-hmm. about okay now uh, what happens at that point is the application team say, yeah, that, those connections look right, and, and they get to a place where they say, this is how my Swift application works. Yeah. Um, if something happens, like if that, if something happens where a new connection um, uh, happens, it will detect when that happens. Why is that important? What are the steps to any form of breach? The first step is infiltration. Infiltration could happen from a phishing attack. It could happen because someone puts malware in somewhere inside the data center. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It could be that you go from a, a low-value asset like an HVAC system you establish a beachhead inside of a data center, then they try to go sideways, right? Mm-hmm. And what we've done now at that point, once we've sort of built that application dependency map, is every host is now a detection system when something tries to move sideways inside the data center. Okay. So that's a classic example of, um, of you know how we do things. Another great example was we were deployed at uh, a Fortune 50 company mm-hmm. on all of their domain controllers. Okay. And uh, when WannaCry started to break out, they were starting to see hosts trying to connect to those domain controllers on ports that they weren't supposed to, mm. and they immediately were able to dispatch the desktop police to go remediate those particular hosts. Wow. Like they had hosts in Buenos Aires trying to connect to uh, things in Paris. And, and saw that, that right and away. they saw that right away, That's right? So it's not just okay. about enforcing the graph, but you can also detect uh, unapproved communications. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, got it. Yeah. And uh, now, can you give me an example of how adaptive micro-segmentation would prevent an advanced persistent threat a little bit more? So, um, you know, if an APT were to break out, as I was just, as we were just talking about, mm-hmm. an APT, the first thing it does is it tries to establish that beachhead. Yep. And then it's going to try to move sideways through an environment. And uh, once again, we're going to prevent that lateral movement mm. uh, of a breach. What's interesting is when, we, when I talk to a lot of the big organizations I get to talk to, I feel fortunate, um, there's a few sort of breaches that they're sort that they see. There's the APT threat, which all these detection technologies that we sort of touched on sort of get into. But a classic thing that um, I'm seeing, especially in sort of more regulated uh, organizations, it could be like a utility, it could be banking, mm-hmm. it could be like a company that um, where the company itself is an application, like a SaaS provider. Um, they're worried about the insider threat. Not the insider threat of APT, but a human mm-hmm. like that actually is actually inside the bank yep. that's trying to do, or inside the uh, the SaaS provider inside the utility company that's trying to uh, find their way to a critical asset. Mm-hmm. And that's a, and this is also an area when a person gets inside the data center and they try to establish an unauthorized connection, just the same way we would with the APT, we can also detect those sorts of things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. And uh, now, how can your approach help secure applications in today's microservices and very containerized world? Well, that's a, another great question. So to us, the enforcement point um, that we spoke about earlier is in the host, right? So right. IP tables and Windows filtering platform are the lingua franca of all these different forms of commute, right? Mm-hmm. Compute. So IP tables is going to sit inside those Linux hosts that's going to uh, basically do uh, have visibility about what's going on inside the containers. IP, uh, Windows filtering platform is in Windows. So if you're running containers and Windows, mm-hmm. Windows Filtering Platform provides us an enforcement point uh, where that's concerned. So to us, that's all the same. It's okay. all different sorts of workloads. In fact, um, you know, uh, we definitely have the container thing. We've shown that for some period of time. Mm-hmm. But a classic thing that a lot of uh, organizations probably do is before containers were cool, mm-hmm. uh, they were doing something, uh, they're doing what we call multi-tenant hosts, where they're running like 12 copies of the same application oh, on the same physical host, and they needed to do segmentation based on that. So it's funny. Actually, what's interesting that I find about containers is 
you know, 10 years ago, they were doing this multi-tenant host thing, mm -hmm. 12 copies of the same application on the same host, and still needing to do segmentation. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we got to VMs, and now we're back to sort of the multi-tenant hosting, but in a much more structured way with containers. Yep. What's interesting is our product sort of bridges all of those different compute variants. Yeah. Um, so that's a nice thing about it is if you're running in your legacy data center on those old applications mm -hmm. or going containers, we could basically do uh, segmentation and visibility across all of those. Nice. That's yeah. incredible. Thanks. All right. And lastly, are there any other interesting features that you would like to highlight about the company? I think the, the, the thing that we've learned uh, since we first came on market yeah. is um, organizations need to align micro-segmentation and visibility um, with how their actual uh, company runs. So okay. um, I call it the Ministry of Security. You probably read 1984, right? I you know, have, like The I Ministry, have. like, so when you have these centralized organizations, mm -hmm. it's sort of, they become the barrier to success. Yeah. So um, uh, organizations have this struggle between their old legacy compute and the new compute, right? Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what we generally see in successful organizations about how they're doing visibility and micro-segmentation Segmentation, is they begin to align their micro-segmentation strategy and rollout with sort of their application teams. So they can basically suggest and create policy down at the application team level, but then the security team does approvals, right? Mm -hmm. So, But if the security team is going to create all the policy and then approve all the policies, that's the Ministry of Security problem and actually doesn't really work in today's world. Right. So. No, that's incredible. Thank you so much for sitting down. Thanks for and having speaking me. With, absolutely. And I'm excited blast. to see this demo in a little bit. Hopefully it'll be good. Yeah. It's going to be great. Thanks. All right, and that's all the time we have right now, so be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors, Visit us on HackerArsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.